everybody, Aaron Blades here, and welcome to our Friday stream. We are back to doing our every Friday, and I love it. It's been it's been too long, and uh, and today we get to do something really special. I just I love this when I get to do this, and that is I get to go back to my roots, and we're going to animate on paper today. I want to show you some animation on paper. Yesterday was World Lion Day, and. Uh, but it didn't quite line up with our live stream today. So we thought we would do something lion themed today for World Lion Day. So I thought in order to show, you know, the movement and action and things like that with paper animation, it might be fun to do a lion roaring, you know, and, and have some fun with the squash and the stretch and the opening up the mouth and the big expressions and all that kind of stuff. So I thought that would be kind of fun. Um, First, before I get into that, uh, I've got Nick Birch with me, my business partner. I got Dustin, my son, Dustin Hi. Blades. Hey, everybody. How's it going? They're both with me. And uh, Nick, do we have anything going on on the website right now? Yeah, we sure do. We've got a big sale going on over at CreatureArtTeacher.com. This weekend, we're doing an animation sale. Animation classes are just $10 each, or you can get two for 15 So. And I changed that image, but forgot to change it in the pen. So we've got a typo. That's uh, okay. No problem. <laughs> So we got a little typo, not a big deal. Nope. But uh, um, I want to, I, I'm going to jump back. Why don't yep. we go ahead? So I'm yep. just going to dive right in. So what I did I, earlier, I just started roughing out a, an idea for what I wanted to do today. They're literally just scribbles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them, I'm going to redraw them, and we're going to do in-between drawings. We're going to get the action nice and smooth and dynamic and all kinds of fun stuff. So uh, why don't we just go ahead and dive in? And once again, if you guys, uh, um, you know, if you have any questions or anything like that, type your questions. Nick will be monitoring. Dustin's going to be monitoring. And uh, unfortunately, I can't see the questions and draw at the same time. So, so we will uh, re relay them over. Yep, I'll be handling TikTok questions and Nick will be handling everything else. So what I'm doing here is, like I said, I've, I've, uh, I've got this lion idea, this lion design in my head, somewhat realistic. And uh, I want to do something with him kind of snarling and roaring. Uh, are you using uh, tracing paper? No, this is not tracing paper. This is animation paper. This is 20-pound paper uh, that we, we get from a company in Burbank, California called Cartoon Supplies. And uh, it's great paper. It's actually just great drawing paper. So you'll see I'll flip a lot. So what I'm doing is I, like I said, I, I kind of, I sketched it in earlier, but when I go in and tie down my sketches, I'll, uh, I'll push them even more. I'm curious if you recommend any animation schools for anyone who wants to animate for Disney. You know, there's, there's a lot of great animation schools out there. There's a lot of great stuff online as well. You know, one of the things that's happened over the years is that colleges have gotten really expensive. And uh, there's so many great uh, online alternatives, um, us being one of them. But, I, you know, I don't want to push it just to have you, you know, if you, if you college is something you want to do, then there's, yes, there's great colleges. I just, you know, just weigh your options before you do it. You don't have to have a degree in this industry. You really have to, you know, unless you, you want to go to another country if you're outside the United States and you're looking to work in the United States, having a college degree does help. Uh, but beyond that, if you're, you know, in the United States, uh, an American, um, or working in your own country, a lot of times, you know, that college degree isn't isn't really necessary. It's really doing the work that's that's the most important. Instagram question: Is that a black wing pencil you're using? This is a Mitsubishi. So Glenn Keane, for those of you uh, you animation buffs out there, you'll know who Glenn Keane is. Glenn created The Little Mermaid and Tarzan and The Beast from Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin from Aladdin. And uh, he was my mentor. And he, um, he's been using these black wing pencils lately. And I saw uh, somewhere online that he was using them. And I thought, you know, Glenn always finds the best pencils. And so I thought, you know what, let's... Uh, I'd give it thought I'd give it a try. So we ordered several boxes and I love them. It's a 10B, so it's super soft. If you're familiar with the the hardnesses of pencils, once you get into the Bs, they get soft. B is soft. H is kind of hard. 
YouTube question. Why are in between animators a separate job from the animators who do the keyframes? Well, because the in betweener, uh, there's rough in betweening, which is the person that kind of adds the rough drawings, but then there's also cleanup in betweeners. And um, it, the way it works uh, in 2D animation, or at least it did when I was doing it, was you know, a rough animator, which is what I was, it was our job to go in and get the acting down, rough it all out, basically draw the way that I'm drawing now. But you never, ever saw any of my drawings up on the screen. What you saw were my assistants, my cleanup assistants uh, uh, and in-betweeners. What they would do is they would come through and they would redraw everything that I drew, put it on model, make it nice and pristine, and uh, get it down to a single line to, to uh, ink and paint. And then they would, um, uh, that would go and, and get photographed and scanned. And I would move on to, you know, because if I sat there and had to clean up every single one of my drawings, it's not time effective. You know, it, uh, uh, doing an animated film is an extremely labor intensive uh, endeavor. And so, if every animator had to also clean up all of their work, it would just take forever. And so we break it up. And so we have cleanup artists and in-betweeners and assistants. For some reason, we went down on TikTok. The stream uh, video went offline, went black. But we're going we're gonna to circle back to that. We'll get it back up. You, yeah. keep, you keep going, Aaron. So, so here... What I'm trying to do is basically go through and take the scribbly drawing I just did and tie it down. Now, there's a difference between a tied down drawing is still a rough drawing. And notice, too, that I'm trying to keep simple shapes. It's not too bad, but you are leaning over the drawing a little oh, bit. There right? we go. Is it my hat? Uh, it's, it's not too bad because you're kind of drawing to the right of the screen, but when you're at the, yeah, you're fine. You're fine. Don't worry. Yeah. No, let me know because just be aware. I'll, I will. If you're, if you're too far over it, I'll let you know. I can take my hat. Actually, I'll just take my hat off because the bill will probably get in the way as well. So I try to keep, even though I'm drawing a big hairy mane on this lion, I want to keep the shapes simple. So here I just have him starting out where he's just looking at looking at the character off off screen. Just like so. There. So now he's going to Something's going to surprise him. He's going to be insulted or I want, he's going to be motivated to, to roar. So he's going to, he's going to take kind of a, a, a step back. Well, actually, let me finish the drawing. Big shapes in the fur. There we go. Shoulder blade comes down. Did you use any reference for these? Instagram question. No, these are not. These are out of my head. I worked on The Lion King back in 1994, and I've drawn lots and lots of different animals and lions in my day. So, no, these are all done from experience. There we go. There. So there's that one. Now you can see how rough I'll get. I'll go through, because a lot of people say, man, you, you animate so clean. Well, this is how I start. I mean, I'll, I'll really rough things out. 
So here, I want him to be kind of like he's taking a bit of a, 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 a breath. Was Ruben Aquino the first animator in The Lion King, and why? He was the first animator on The Lion King because he went on about a year ahead of time and started gathering up all the different types of locomotion reference that we would all need when we came onto the film. And I've actually still got my... Where are they? I don't know where they are off the top of my head. I might have a couple of them. The blue binders. Yeah, I remember it. Yeah. Anyway, don't worry about it. I've still got uh, a couple of the blue binders that Ruben went off and made... So he he literally went through, you know, this is back before, you know, we had a lot of different conveniences that we have now. So he literally had to go through and, and print stuff out off of the video uh, player that we had. Someone says, how are you doing the picture in picture on Instagram? I didn't think they allowed that. This is great. Yep. New tools, new tools. I think we got picture back, and I think got audio back on TikTok. So we're putting that back up. All right, that's great. Welcome back, TikTokers. We went offline on TikTok for a little bit there. Sorry about that. Yep, had some uh, technical difficulties. Had to handle over here. No problemo. We're still figuring it out. Yep. I want to let people know that also for World Lion Day. Get your paws on a puzzle. Uh, if you use promo code LIONS, you can get $5 off any puzzle order over at CreatureArtTeacher.com. And this particular one we're showing on the screen right now is one of Aaron's lion paintings. Uh, that's available as a puzzle. Use promo so code I, LIONS. I did that for World Lion Day, what, three years ago? Yeah. Yep. So here he's kind of taking that breath. <gasps> so you've got all this fur and it's a solid mass, but you want to you want it to react as if it's very fluid and pliable. So you'll see that I'm creating this drag in the fur. Some of the best lion animation I've ever seen was from Ruben Aquino and Tony Fuccelli. Tony Fuccelli animated Mufasa. And obviously, uh, uh, you know, there's Mark Henn who did Simba, young Simba. One of Zanji's students has a question on Facebook. Sure. <laughs> uh, this is from Gabriel. He asks, what decision led you to leaving Disney and starting your own company? How did that come about? Well, there's a lot of different things that led up to that. And uh, there's some personal stuff that happened. I lost um, I lost my wife to cancer. Uh, she passed away, Dustin's mom. Uh, she passed away from breast cancer. And that really took the wind out of my sails. And uh, after that happened, we decided, you know, I, I decided we really, I needed to really kind of start over and find myself again. Because I just, I just wasn't, uh, I wasn't, I lost my way. You know, and so um, so we quit. I quit Disney. I took the, the kids, Dustin and I and, and my daughter, and uh, we left California, came back to Florida, which is my home state. And I tried to start over again. I started with a new studio uh, directing there. And th but that studio, it wasn't Disney, <laughs> you know, and they they mismanaged their funds and they went bankrupt. And so I just decided after that, that, OK, I don't want to I don't want to put my hands in executives anymore. And I wanted to do something different. I wanted to get out of the studio world. I wanted to do something that would make uh, my wife, Karen, proud. You know, she was always wanting to do good. And so I wanted to do something good. So, we, you know, I started thinking about all the people that had helped me over the years, kind of, you know, to learn what I've learned over the 25 years at that point. And, uh, and so I um, 
realize that with the advent of social media and YouTube was just coming around and all that kind of stuff, I'd be able to create videos and, and tutorials and people could, I could just impart everything that I've learned and people could get a head start, young, young artists. I could help them get a head start. And the other thing too was that college was getting expensive. And so I just wanted to find ways to help students out, wanted to give back. And so that's when we started CreatureArtTeacher.com. Nick and I met and uh, we got together and started talking about the website and how we could do this business. And that was 10 years ago, actually over 10 years ago that we really kind of started talking about it, but it's 10 years ago that we had the business rolling. Uh, a couple of Instagram questions. Can you show your spacing guide between these two drawings? I'm not sure what they mean by spacing guide. I don't have a spacing guide. I'm doing this all by eye. Do they mean chart maybe? I'm like, yeah, they're probably thinking about the chart, but I'm not, I don't have a chart written out for this because I'm just, I'm doing it by feel. And then um, if you didn't animate Beast in Beauty and the Beast, is there another character you would have liked to work on in that film? You know, Beast, I can't imagine having done any other character. I really loved animating the Beast. Um, it was just, yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe Gaston could have been fun, I think. I think he would have been a fun character. Uh, what software or app would you recommend for someone that's looking to learn animation? Um, they're depending on what uh, what you know if you're going to work on paper or if you're going to work on a Cintiq or a tablet. Uh, there's some really great. Um, uh, Palapeg is a great uh, for uh, working in. Um, oh my God, my brain on an iPad. Yeah, iPad. Thank you. And Procreate. As I'm, when I'm drawing, my my brain turns off the other parts of my brain. So, <laughs> uh, uh, Procreate has good animation in it. Uh, Calipeg, uh, TV Paint is what I use for my uh, Wacom Cintiq, which is a bigger. It's a bigger program, and uh, a bit more pricey, but it's you you get what you pay for. But if you're looking as you know, just kind of as a hobbyist. Then yeah, there's a lot of really uh, cost-effective options out there. Are you left-handed or is the camera inverted? I'm left-handed. I'm left-handed. My brother's left-handed. My mother was left-handed. My father's left-handed. The whole family. The whole fam damnly. Uh, why do you tr uh, animate traditionally and visually? I just like to do both. Um, when I'm doing traditional animation on paper, it's mostly for demonstrations, just so I can keep this art, art alive. Um, nowadays, with the advent of paperless animation, TV paint being a great piece of software, um, it's, not, it's not time effective anymore to do it on paper, or even cost effective. Uh, just because it's it's quite a bit quicker, uh, just because I don't have to shoot my scenes when I'm working digitally. I like the fact that it's still hand-drawn, but it just saves a lot of time. But I like, I still love the art of hand-drawn animation on paper, uh, because you, you obviously you've got, you've got something to hold on to. Tactile, it's it's physical. Is it better to clean up and then in between, or do you do it the other way around? No, no it's better to tie down the drawings like I'm doing right now and then in between. And, um, then, and, and then, then you clean up at the end. Yeah, then clean up at the end. Now, sometimes we, we don't do all of the drawings in our rough animation. We'll just indicate what goes where, and then we'll, in our charts... We will indicate, like, so, you know, like, let's say there's five drawings that go in between these two. I would chart this. This would be drawing number one. This would be drawing number, uh, so let's say this is drawing number nine. We'll do that. Do eight drawings in between. 
So what I would do is if, if there's if it's just straight in betweens, I would create a chart like this. This is the drawing one. This is drawing nine. And then if I want it to be even, then I'd go okay. Drawing five is going to be right here. Unfortunately, TikTok can't see the the numbers you're writing down. Oh, sorry. Let me do this. Which means Instagram can't either. And they, is that better? Yeah. yeah they can see the they can see the chart now. Yeah, so so what happened? What would happen is um, this would be animated on twos as well, meaning each drawing would be held for two frames. And I would say, okay, I want to slow out of that pose, so that's going to be drawing three. Drawing five is going to be halfway between drawing one and nine. This is one and nine, all right. And then I'd want drawing seven to be halfway in between there. So that would be a chart right there that my assistant would get. And that would tell them where the drawings are placed in between these two drawings, and they could they would be able to figure it out. Is there anything that you don't like to draw or animate? Um, I don't like violence. I don't like to animate, draw violent, you know, violent scenes. Letty. You but know. you did do some of the fight scene in Lion King, didn't you? I did a little bit of the fight um, where it's like where Simba is coming up to Scar and he says, you don't deserve to live. <laughs> he did make that um, zombie bear, zombie lion the past few, uh, for a few Halloween. I did, so. yeah. Grudgingly, I did. <laughs> I don't want to do it, but it's, not <laughs> it's Halloween, so zombie, here we go. When you look back at your life and over the years, what would you have done differently? Um, and also, what do you want to be remembered for with your storytelling? Um, I want, I want it, you know, I, I want, uh, I don't know that I would do anything differently. Um, but there's, you know, I just, I, I want people to look back and say, you know, that guy really cared. You know, because I do, and uh, I want you know. I've always. I, it sounds corny, but I'm always saying, "All right, everybody, let's go out and put some beauty back into the world." When I sign off, and I really do feel that way. I think that's our. It's our legacy that we can leave behind. That you know, it's positivity. Positivity, I think, lives. It lives on beyond the actual act of being positive, and it spreads. And it's, um, you know, it's the whole pay it forward kind of idea. And I think if we all did that, then, you know, we'd be in a really good place. And I, and I try to, that's what I, I try to get into, you know, what we do here by giving back. Um, you know, I've got more, I've got more days behind me than I have ahead of me. And so I want to make sure that, you know, in the time that I have left, I'm, I'm doing something positive. Have you ever drawn a shark? I have drawn a shark. I've drawn many sharks. I love drawing sharks. So here he is, coming up. YouTube question, do your hands ever get tired after drawing for such a long time? No, they don't. I, um, I, I draw in certain ways that I, uh, I don't really get tired. I draw, I don't draw like this. I don't draw like this. There's a little bit of that. But I mainly draw from my shoulder and my elbow, you know, so it, it's, I've drawn ways that it won't give me carpal tunnel, um, you know, those types of risks and, and, you know, things that can go wrong with uh, drawing excessively the wrong way. Uh, do you have any tips for doing life drawings of animals? Yeah, you know, I'm actually, I'm going to be doing a course on that. Um, let me get this real quick. I'm going to be doing a course on that where, uh, you know, first of all, know the anatomy, you know, when you, when you go in to draw, uh, an animal, you know, a lot of people ask me, how the heck are you drawing animals, you know, from life? They're moving around so much and man, I just can't do that. And it's like, well, I, it's, I, I know the animal's anatomy ahead of time. It's like, if you're drawing figure, you know, human figures, you know, the anatomy before you sit down and so that being said now you know once you understand that anatomy 
then it's just a matter of gathering, you know, you're looking at the animal in front of you and you can catch a gesture, you can catch a, a flow or a pose uh, and just jot it down really quickly, a quick scribble. And then you use that knowledge of anatomy to fill in those gaps. And that's really what it is. It's a lot of cheating. That's what it is. So here's the squash. So for you animation buffs out there, you've heard of squash and uh, stretch and squash. And that's what I'm doing here. So he's, this is the big anticipation before the, the roar. So he's gathering up the energy for the roar. That's a, you know, he comes down before he goes up. Facebook question. <clears throat> How come in Mulan, Lilo and Stitch and Brother Bear, we don't see tone mats and shading on the characters? That was, it depends on the shot. And there, there is a little bit here and there. But, you know, those, those types of things, they cost, it, it costs money. You know, anytime you're drawing and animating, that's an artist that you have to pay. And so that everything that gets drawn, well, there's a cost attached to that. And so animating shadows and tone mats and things like that are, uh, they're expensive. All three of those were made at the Florida studio, by the way. They were. And so, um, and it takes time. So it's a matter of, you know, putting your money where uh, it's best spent, really. And there are tone, I mean, if you look at the avalanche in Mulan, the avalanche has all kinds of shadows in there with the with the avalanche itself and so i'm thinking about anatomy in here as i'm squashing the face you know here there's the stretch and here's the squash uh ivan on instagram asks hey hi i'm a young artist and you really inspire me i wanted to ask do you do uh, anything like drawing magical creatures like Lord of the Rings, elves, uh, oh, yeah. trolls, etc.? Yeah, if you look up, if you just do a Google search of Aaron Blaze elf, you'll, you'll see tons. all kinds of elves and different creatures that I've designed from. I call them the hidden creatures, creatures from the forest. There was a film that I was directing when I was at Disney uh, when my wife was sick. And um, it was called The King of the Elves. And uh, we were cranking away on it, but, um, you know, I just, I never got a chance to finish it. So a lot, I did a lot of designs for that film, a lot of initial designs for it. Let people know that might have come in late. We're running an animation sale over at Creature Art Teacher. Uh, classes are just ten dollars each, or you can get two for fifteen. So that's a great deal on our courses. They're usually like fifty dollars. So this is a huge sale we've got going on right now. So you see that squash. Trying to keep those shapes nice and simple. We get all that flow in the fur. And scrunch up that mane as he's coming down. Man, we went and saw... Uh, Mission Impossible last night. We did a whole little company-wide trip to the movies last night. That was fun. Man, what a great, fun movie. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Anybody else seen Mission Impossible? Let us know in the comments. Hey, 
Fun Films is on TikTok. Hey, Fun Films. Hey, Aaron and hey, Nick. What about me? <laughs> I'm here, too. <laughs> wah, wah. There it is. <laughs> so fun film we know fun film through our tuesday and thursday stream so if you're not familiar uh back on our website creatureartteacher.com uh if you become a member part of the benefits not only do you get over 700 hours of um, art and animation training uh you can also join me i'm making an animated short called snow bear and you can join me twice a week every tuesday and thursday uh, starting at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, and um, you just join me in the studio as I animate, and I talk about the making of the film, and and uh, it's basically like a little filmmaking, animated filmmaking class. Yeah, we, we, have, do. we have a great time. Yeah, so we're now streaming three days a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays to our members, and Fridays to everybody. Uh, any tips for uh, people learning how to? Flip frames instead of using the light table uh, and onion, onion skin layers. Yeah, you know it's it it's well it's it's doing just that. You got to flip. You got to flip, flip, flip. You notice I'm always flipping the paper so I can see that animation. That's the key to it. You want to see. Don't depend on the light table to show you the distances between lines. What you want to see is the movement of form. So train your eye. Force yourself to, to just see the form moving. And a good a good uh, exercise for that is turning off your onion skin. I use my onion skin quite a bit when I'm animating digitally. But uh, to train, you know, if, if you want to train how to, you know, not be dependent on it, turn it off. Yeah, someone asked, do you have a Discord server? Yeah, members of our website get access to our Discord server. So if you become a member at creatureartteacher.com, you can get access to that. Uh, the Irish on YouTube says, hey, Aaron, do you see yourself more as an emotional or intellectual artist? Uh, probably emotional. I would say very much an emotional artist. I do. I mean, you can't have one without the other. I think so much of art, um, and I think that's a, it's a big misnomer. You know, I worked with a lot of executives that just felt all artists were just super emotional and you just got to coddle them and handle them the right way and and in a way a lot of artists are but it's also a very uh intellectual exercise you know thinking about you know when you're thinking about especially when you're creating realism and, and uh, animation you have to think about timing you got to think about lighting you got to think about how shadow and form work together these are all intellectual analytical ways of thinking um and then how you portray it is the creative side Instagram question, or I'm sorry, uh, tick, uh, I can't talk. Okay. Twitch question. Are all of the classes on your site animation based? I'm a little too old to get into animation, but I still make art. Would appreciate some general art and animal lessons. No, there. we've got so many different subjects. Uh, animation is actually a small piece of the pie um, on our website. Yeah, uh, we've got, got hundreds of hours of traditional. Seven, over 700 hours. So on you know we've got character design and you know with, within the animation world we got character design storyboarding uh animation like we're talking about a lot of different ver uh, things there but then we've also got digital painting uh uh um animal and, drawing hundreds of hours i've of got animal lots of uh, courses on animal drawing with more coming and then on the traditional side of things i've got courses on oil painting watercolor charcoal several courses on watercolor charcoal um what am i missing lots of different things yeah just go to the site go to creatureartteacher.com and check it out you'll see there's a lot of different things there are these uh drawings for sale they probably will be for sale at some point i sense another auction in our i sense an auction in our future any animated movies this year that you enjoyed watching uh, this year that I enjoyed watching. I haven't seen a whole lot this year. What have I seen? The most recent one that I really enjoyed is Office on Netflix is uh, Demona. Yeah, I haven't seen that one yet. It's really good. You know, to be honest with you, I've been so kind of buried in trying to get... I've had several animation projects uh, that I've been trying to get done. Uh, I haven't been really looking outside of my own world of animation to see what else is being done. 
So here he starts to come up. Rawr, 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 rawr. So what I want to do here is come right over the top of that. Dave Clayton is on Instagram and says, good evening, gentlemen. Oh, I messaged Dave earlier just to make sure he's all set. We're going to have uh, Dave Clayton, who Nick was just talking about, who's on watching us. Uh, Dave is from uh, one of our friends from the UK, and he's going to be here next week filming a new course with us. So Dave will be covering InDesign, which is Adobe's book design uh, software. It's layout, magazine, layout. all kinds of layout yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it's very, very cool if you're, as an artist, if you're interested in creating your own book or anything like that. And Dave is just an expert at it. And then also uh, Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator. He's a guru at that. We're going to have a good time. So you'll notice what I'm doing. Look how squashed the nose is here and how stretched it's coming up here. Okay. Go ahead, sorry. Fun film on TikTok says, uh, this line reminds me of the one Dustin did the voice of where he says, oh, oh my. Uh, well, this know? one's that one was very much more cartoony than this one. This one's more of a kind of a Lion King dramatic. Have you ever done stop motion animation? What do you think of that style of animation? I love I love stop motion. I've never done it. Never done it. That's one of the courses. We've got some stop motion animators in mind that we're hoping to do yeah. one of our next animation courses on. I'd really like to get some nitty gritty into how to do maquettes. And, uh, not maquettes. Um, armatures. Armatures and yeah. puppets that are rigged for stop motion. It's, not a, it's hard to find detailed instructions on how to do that out there so i'd like to dave dive i just like saying dive <laughs> i like dive <laughs> Well, I'll put things up. Bring your. I told him on. I told him to make sure he bring his bathing suit because it's been so freaking hot here. You should just go. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm sorry, Dave. Do you think so, you could ever get Terrell Whitlatch to do a course? Yeah, well, it's, we actually she, talked about that on our last. Yeah, stream. we we've actually talked to Terrell. We're good friends with Terrell. And uh, she's she said yeah she'd like to do it. It's a matter of just timing. It's you know she's so busy, we're busy. Um, yeah, we just gotta we just gotta make it happen. Uh, do you have a favorite Disney character? Uh, I wouldn't say I have a favorite. I, I mean, there's there's characters that I've animated that I've I've, I've favored like the Beast and you know Nala and, and things like that. Um, but then overall favorite characters just from films that were, you know, Bambi is my favorite Disney film. And I love, I love the character too of Bambi. Actually, you know what? I'm, I'm doing something a little wrong. Get that eye a little further out. Do you have a lion reference nearby or is this from memory? This is all from memory. Instagram question. What was the best thing you learned under Glenn Keane? Um, stay loose. Loosen up. You know, when you see me doing these, the loose drawings underneath these tied down drawings, I learned that from Glenn. You know, too many times young, young animators get too tight too soon. You got to work it out. Find the most dynamic... There we go. The I animation you were talking about, is that called the little fawn? Is that me? Oh no, it was somebody else. Sorry. Oh. Bambi. Uh, do you work for Disney? I worked for Disney for twenty one years and I left in two thousand ten. So I left thirteen years ago. It's been I can't believe it's been thirteen years. But I did work for Disney for 21 years. Hey, where can I buy these glasses? 
CreatureArtTeacher.com. CreatureArtTeacher.com. What's a, what's a character that you wish you could have animated, but the stars just didn't align for it to happen? Marahute. Marahute from The Rescuers Down Under. The Eagle. I wanted to animate that character so bad with Glenn Keane. And I just wasn't able to do it. Uh, where do you work as an animator now? Uh, right here at home. I make my own films. We have our own website, CreatureArtTeacher.com. Uh, once I left Disney and I left the other studio that I was working with, we, we went independent. So now we make our own films. Uh, the uh, uh, Snow Bear is our next upcoming film that's due out in about a year. And uh, it's going to be great. We're really excited about it. You can join me every... Tuesday and Thursday as I stream the making of it. We are making it and you know I'm trying to do something a little different than what we've done in you know when I worked for other film companies, you know, usually a film company tries to keep their movies secret until they release them. And we decided, you know, let's try to build an audience before the movie comes out. So um, I'm actually sharing the entire making of the film before I actually release it. Now, we're not going to show the entire film. I'm not going to share everything because I want a few surprises in there. But by and large, you can watch me make pretty much the whole movie. So here he's coming up. YouTube comment, you draw so fast. <laughs> that comes from years and years of drawing. Luke asks any on Facebook, any plans for an anthropomorphism course? Um, didn't I cover something like that in one of my courses? Uh, you touch on it some in your paper animation course. You touch on it some. Uh, I don't, there's no plans on having a whole course on that, but I do touch on it uh, in some of my other courses. I swear I, we did something like a live stream, uh, one of my, our live events where I talked about it or something. YouTube comment. Everybody keeps saying hi to Aaron. Well, what about Dustin? Hi, Dustin. Hi. <laughs> and Nick. Who was it? Who was it that said that? Uh, Patrix8558. Hey, Patrix. Patrix. Uh, Fun film says that you uh, did it on your animal caricature workshop. Oh, that's right. It was animal. Yeah, that's right. I knew we covered it somewhere. Yeah, but there's no course on it. So, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, not a course, but I knew we talked about it at one point. Uh, YouTube question Do you have any advice for drawing more loosely? Whenever I try, I end up drawing too tight because I get caught up in the drawing details. Yeah, you, it, it's something that you just got to constantly work at and force yourself. You know, recognize it when you're doing it and force yourself to pull back on it. Everyone's commenting, how do you draw this fast? And Dave Clayton wrote, he draws fast because he has a really good pencil. That's right. <laughs> it's all in the pencil. Sponsored by Dave. <laughs> Have you ever had times when you were depressed and did not draw at all? Yes. We've all gone through that. And uh, I've gone through very deep emotional stress yeah where i didn't draw at all but you get through it and uh and you 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 know it's also you know art has been my savior as well and so you just i don't know you just you you you, you find a way want to let people know that just joined us uh yesterday was world lion day and uh, we are running a sale over on our website to celebrate. Uh, if you use, celebrate, if you use promo code okay. Lions, you can get five dollars off of any puzzle order. And if you go to creatureartteacher.com/puzzles, you can see all of the puzzles that we have to offer, including uh, this one, uh, a previous World Lion Day image that you're seeing on the screen. What character uh, did 
did you end up animating instead of the eagle for Rex Weaver Down Under? I was a new animator on that film. And uh, so I did a lot of the little prison animals. And I did some animation of Cody. Uh, did you do a test with of the... Uh, yes, of, of Joanna, the lizard. The guana. Instagram question. Any plans for a sceneries or background course in the future? Yes, actually, we have one in the works right now with Armand Serrano. He's going to be teaching layout. So, yes, that's a big yes. A lot of people know Armand is a visual development artist, but before he did that sort of work, he actually worked in the layout department at Disney. He worked on a bunch of the films, right? Including Mulan and and Brother, Bear. Brother Bear, yeah, yeah. He, that's where Armand and I got to really know each other is on Brother Bear. I mean, we knew each other on Mulan, but we didn't get to talk very much because our, our paths just didn't overlap. So someone's asking if you could uh, show the first one that you they did real quick. There it is. There's the first drawing. There it is. him kind of growing a little bit he's coming toward camera uh, one of the goals of my dream was all uh, has always been to be a Disney animator any advice you know animate so you want to be a Disney animator animate learn to act um, take uh, acting classes draw uh, drawing classes um, now, if you want to be a CG animator, then, you know, learn the software. Um, all of that, you know, filmmaking classes, layout classes, cut, you know, all of that stuff. Anything uh, related to film will help. It briefly went down on Instagram to oh, where I think Are we, we back. Little, I think, yeah, I think we just had a little bandwidth sputter. Do you like 3D animation as well, or do you, uh, or will traditional animation just always be your passion? Well, traditional animation will always be my passion, but I, I appreciate all kinds of animation. And yes, I like 3D. Um, I like all kinds. I like animated storytelling. Uh, but you know, hand drawn is something that will always be my passion. You know, just the idea of being able to sit down and draw images like this and bring a character to life just through a pencil or a stylus drawing. Um, that to me is magic. It's the uh, close, it's the closest thing to wizardry that you can get. <laughs> YouTube, YouTube comment. Hey, Aaron, I became an animal artist because of you. Learning art from most of your courses made me fall in love with drawing them. Thank you so much. I hope to meet you someday. Love from Nigeria. Oh, well, thank you. Love back to you. You might end up in Nigeria at some point doing some talks. Uh, YouTube question. It baffles me how many artists... Uh, seem to be able to draw a complex anatomy from imagination. Do you think you could find work before reaching that level? Yes. I, I, I would say it's only been in the last 12 or 15 years that I've been able to do this. Up to this point, I faked it. I faked, faked it till I made it. Even on Lion King, when I was working on Lion King, I couldn't draw lions the way that I'm drawing them now. I faked it. Yep, that's the big secret. Faked it. Didn't know what the heck I was doing. Uh, could you explain the difference between animating on ones, twos, and threes? Yes. So it, it's very simple. Animating on ones means... Okay, let me back up. So um, normally when the film goes through the camera, or even digitally nowadays, you're looking at a certain frame rate, which means you're looking at frames flashing before your eyes. That's how we see movement. We see frames going through the through whatever we're watching at a certain rate they the, you start to they start to blend together and we see movement so if you're if you're doing just say we have one second 
you know, going through. If you're flashing two or three frames per second, you're going to see each individual frame. You're not going to see a lot of movement. But once you start getting up to 12 and 15 and 24 frames per second, that that those individual frames start to blend with each other and you start to see fluidity in the movement. Now, traditionally, the frames going through what we when we watch a movie or, or things like that, they're going through at 24. There's a lot of video nowadays at 30 frames a second, but by and large, it's it's 24 frames per second. That's our gauge for all of our timing when we're animating. Basically, you, you're breaking time down into individual pieces, and the most we can break it down is 24 pieces per second, which means we can get 24 drawings, we can create 24 images per second because that's the rate that they go through the camera. So when we have fast action and we need a lot of drawings to describe what's going on, a character running or fighting and all these things, then we have the ability to do a different drawing for every frame. That's animating on ones. That's because I'm animating one drawing for each frame. Now we can get away with twos, meaning I'm doing a drawing and holding it for two frames and the eye will still see it as fairly fluid movement. We do that a lot in animation. When you watch an animated film, it's probably about like a Disney film, old Disney films, there are probably about half twos and half ones. I do a lot of twos in my animation. Um, it saves me twice the work, right? So I, I, I don't, I'm, instead of doing 24 drawings per second, I can do 12 drawings per second and still get the same effect. Now, you can also get away with, now, well, it depends on the type of animation. A lot of anime will do threes and fours just because they're very complex from uh, just from a drawing standpoint. So if you watch Miyazaki films, they'll do one drawing for every three, uh, for every three frames or one drawing for every four frames. It's not super smooth movement, but it's it's smooth enough that it's going to get the story across and you'll get the action. So that's what it means to be animating on ones, twos, or threes, or even fours. Anytime you hear a number, eights, that means it's, it's a drawing being held for eight frames. Uh, fun from animations asked me, uh, what is my favorite animal to photograph? Uh, Sandhill frame. Sandhill crane. They are very calm and they're uh, not so easily uh, frightened. And I've had plenty of time to walk right feet away from them without them caring a whole lot. So here's a rough I did earlier. If you're interested in what animation that that information that Aaron just explained to Anna about animation and you want to learn more, I want to let you know we have an animation sale going on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com. All animation courses are just $10 each, or you can get any two for just $15, and that ends Monday. Bingo. Do it. Uh, Mario is asking, uh, was it difficult uh, the first time you used a computer to paint the movie about uh, the rest of the down under? Uh, yeah, well, they had a, I, I wasn't part of that. We had a, a different department that was handling that part. I was still animating on paper. But yeah, that was, uh, that's when our CAP system was coming into, coming into its own. The CAP system was our, our coloring system. Uh, when did you start uh, using, using computers to, to draw and paint, and did you have a rough time painting? Well, I started, I started using, uh, doing digital drawing and painting in 2005. 2007, 2006, somewhere in there, 2005, 2006. And uh, it wasn't too bad because I, I was lucky. I had a Cintiq and working on a Cintiq made it very, it was just a great learning curve because you're, you're you know, it, it's, it, even though I'm drawing on a screen, I'm still, you know, drawing and seeing the work where my hand is rather than drawing on a, on a tablet where, you know, you're looking at a screen and drawing down here. And that's hard to, for me, that was hard to get used to. What are some good habits that you'd recommend a beginning animator should develop early on? Question from Twitch. Well, there's, you know, learn to see that animation without, without flipping your light table on. 
That's a big one. And uh, flip, 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 flip that paper. Uh, do you have any ideas on what... Stay loose. Sorry, sorry. I just thought of another one. Stay loose. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Dustin. Sorry. Uh, do you have any ideas on what to include in your portfolio if you want to go into animation? Yeah, so if you want to go into animation, obviously you want animation in your portfolio. But don't... You know, a lot of students, a lot of young artists out of school make the mistake of kind of putting in all of their exercises, you know, their walk cycles and things like that, the basic stuff that they learn when they're learning animation. You know, when you're going into a studio, they don't want to see that. They want to see character animation. They want to see acting. They want to see emotion. They want to see that you can bring a character to life. So the more you can show that type of thing, the better off you're going to be. A YouTube question. Does paper animation still have a place in the world of filmmaking, or has it basically all switched to digital? It's basically, from a production standpoint, it's basically all turned to digital. Now, I think there's still a lot of independent filmmakers out there that do stuff on paper. Um, uh, what's your name? The, the British animator, that uh, something from the heart of the art. She did Fairs everything. of the heart. Yeah, Fairs of the art. She did, she did everything on paper in that, in that short. And it's beautiful. I mean, she it's just stunningly beautiful. So for that type of filmmaking, there's always going to be a place for it. And if we want it, you know, there's paper that, you know, just has its own look for sure. Is it possible to draw an animal too violent? No, I don't know. I don't know what that question means. Is it too possible to draw it too violent? Too violent, like uh... Dude, oh, there's a lot of violence out there. Animals aren't the they're not always the the sweetest things in the world. We've seen some pretty brutal stuff out there. I mean there's even that one animated feature that was based on a book of uh, rabbits that Watership Down. Watership Down. I've seen clippets of that one and Clippets. Yeah, it's it's pretty brutal. It gave all of us kids from the 70s nightmares. A few others that are uh, pretty violent, if, if not more violent. There's even a couple of animes that would make you really... Well, there was a poaching, an anti-poaching video that a director wanted me to do uh, um, that was just ultra-violent. And, uh, you know, the, the heart, their heart was in the right place and, you know, wanting to fight uh, elephant poaching... But it was just not the way I wanted to portray it. And it was just way too violent for my taste. And so I turned the job down. Some people are saying there are still some television animation done on paper, as well as some anime. Doesn't Miyazaki still work on paper? Um, so, well... I don't know because they do some on paper for sure, but but Studio Ghibli is the one that created the Open Tune software, and that's digital. So oh, well, there you certainly go. Certainly not yeah. doing all paper. Do you prefer paper or digital animation? Um, to be honest with you, when it comes to creating a production, I very much prefer digital. It's so much more efficient. When it comes to the art of animation, I prefer paper. Like doing this demonstration for you guys, I, this to me is just, this is heaven. I don't get to do this very often, and I love doing this sort of thing. Uh, what's your favorite Disney song? Oh, geez. I don't know. Zip -a -doo -da. I don't know. That's a good one. I always enjoy the... Uh, I always love the opening of The Lion King. Oh, yeah. Good 
day? Like, what do you, I don't know what's in the 3D, the 3D uh, ministry in the theaters and the, the impact of the drums, you could feel it in the theater. Yeah. Sean on YouTube asks, can you go from frames one to frame four or five in a timing chart? Yeah, that's what I did over on the over here. Do you want me to do it again? Maybe they didn't see it before. Yeah, they might not have. But I think they're more just asking whether. Yes, you could you could do that if you're asking if you can do that. Absolutely, yes. But I can show you in just a second here. So hopefully you can see you can see the animation. Uh, what was the first Disney film that you worked worked on? Uh, it was a Roger Rabbit short cartoon called Roller Coaster Rabbit. Uh, Instagram question. I'm an art teacher and want to change my career to animation. I already have a BA in art and was thinking of getting my MFA in animation. Do you think it will be worth it or are there other options? No, I don't think it's worth. If you've already got an art degree, that's great. You can. There's so much you can learn online uh, regarding animation. You don't have to pay for an MFA in that. Yeah, um, generally, generally speaking, animation is not a field that requires a degree. Yeah, it's about the quality of the work. Yeah, so I mean, it's my my recommendation. If you've already got a BFA and you've already and you're teaching. You've got you've got art chops already, so now it's just a matter of learning the technical side of animation and what to look for, and 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 uh, you know if you already draw well, you know it's learning sequential drawing, it's learning acting and all that kind of stuff, and so there's lots of other options out there to to learn all that in. So here I've got the main kind of flying out. Get a main kind of popping out there. Do you have any tips on how to stay motivated when making animation? Yeah, I mean, create something that's going to keep you excited. You know, I, I, uh, I've had a lot of movies that, you know, when I was working for Disney, you know, Pocahontas was a really tough film for me to work on. It was very held back. Um, it was a nice film, and I, you know, and I think the the end result was nice. But from an animation standpoint, it was a tough one because we had to work from live action reference, and and uh, and it was very held back animation. And uh, so we would find different ways that we could get motivated about it, you know. And, and Glenn was really great about that, Glenn Keane. And so you know, a lot of what I talk about in, in regards to that type of thing is what he talked to me about, you know, which is you know, find that thing and whatever it is that you're working on that you can focus on and get excited about it and make that your focus. And that's what we did for for Pocahontas is that we we said, okay, this is going to be our, our subtle animation film. And so this is going to give us an opportunity to really understand, you know, what it takes to do subtle, you know, held back animation. On Lion King, did you determine your key poses according to the voice acting audio? Yeah, if, if you you always do. If you have a, a shot that has audio in it, then the, the actors um, they always are recorded first. We don't we you know in the in the type of animation that we do, we don't record the dialogue after the animation. The dialogue is recorded first, and then the animation is done according to what's acted in the dialogue. So, yeah, so we, we listen to the dialogue and then the movements are dictated by what we hear and what we visualize the movements to be. So I always love a well-acted shot that's that, that's got a great voice because it really gives you a lot to work with as an animator.
animated movie that you feel is underrated? Underrated? Underrated. Brother Bear. Yeah, Brother Bear. <laughs> <laughs> Treasure um, well, I, I don't think it's underrated now. I think at the time it was very underrated, which was um, uh, Iron Giant. Oh, yeah. Iron Giant was a big bomb when it came out, and it was so disappointing. I think Warner Brothers, I think they expected it to, to bomb so that they really didn't get behind it. And it's a masterpiece. How do you transfer digital art onto paper? For example, I used Procreate to figure out perspective on a thumbnail piece. Would you just print it out uh, with blue lines or how would you go about that? Thanks. Uh, well, you got to figure out the, the race, you know, the, the, the size first, but yeah, I mean, you could just print it out. That's what we did, you know, back in the old days when we had to animate to live action, or if we had a, a piece of computer animation that would, they would print out a wire frame for us to animate off of, uh, it was just printed onto paper and we would animate accordingly. So yeah, you can do that. Is it pleasant to see the beautiful art of Disney classics and see that you have participated in it? Yes. It actually feels great, to be honest with you. Makes you feel pretty. Uh What's the paper you're using to draw the animation? This is uh, animation paper that's pre-punched. I've got the pegs down the bottom. And uh, I get it from a company in Burbank, California called Cartoon Supplies. And uh, it's 25, 20 pound, 16 field paper. Uh, not not going to lie, I think Fantastic Mr. Fox is a pretty underrated movie. Oh, I, I don't know that it was underrated, though. I think it was always considered a pretty awesome piece of film. That one had quite a, quite a bit of uh, advertising to it. That one and also um... oh, I'm drawing a blank all of a sudden. What's the other one that uh, what's the other animated one that he that he did with the dogs? Yeah. The, the dog island one or Yeah, I think it was I think it's what it was. Isle called. of Dogs. Isle of um, Dogs, there you go. Isle of Dogs, yeah. Yeah, it was great. What do you think about Brave basically reusing one third of the plot of Brother Bear? <laughs> we won't talk about it. <laughs> oh, what was the question? Yeah, Brave. that was a, that was a uh, third of the movie is the same plot as Brother Bear. Yeah, that yeah. We got a little we got a little annoyed with that with John Lasseter. John Lasseter had a way of uh kind of thinking of things in one direction, like yeah, I I'm I'm not gonna get into it. <laughs> Dang it, John. account on Cartoon Supplies website uh, to order animation supplies? No. I don't, well, you might. I don't know. They might make you I, I've out. ordered it without having an account. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I think you can go in as a guest. Because that's the second time we've gotten that question. Actually, it looks like the same person. You probably wasn't here when we answered that question. Oh, gotcha. Twitch comment. Glenn Keane is awesome. <laughs> yes, Glenn Keane is awesome. You know what else is awesome? Everything, Everything is awesome. awesome. <laughs> all right. I love how we all do. <laughs> want to let people know who might be joining the link we've got a couple of sales going on over at creature art teacher first of all this weekend you can get any animation course for just ten dollars or you can get any two for fifteen dollars 
Uh, so we've got character design, paper animation, digital animation, the storyboarding classes all fall under that. Four-legged walks, trots, and runs. Aaron's got an advanced animation course. Those are all $10 each or two for 15. And also, uh, we're having a puzzle sale. Yesterday was World Lion Day, so if you use promo code LIONS, you can get $5 off any puzzle, puzzle order. Uh, we've got about 15 a dozen or so puzzles, uh, including this lion one that you see on the screen. It's puzzling. How fascinating. It's puzzling. Getting through that ad read was puzzling. <laughs> a fun film animation asks, uh, do you know if there will be any more uh, gold lion shirts in uh, what? Uh, oh, lion shirts. That, yeah, we have lion shirts on the website. You've never even looked at the website, have you, Dustin? <laughs> <laughs> um, that color has been out of stock for a long time, so I might have to remove it or come up with a different one. But. But here I have him kind of bringing his head around in a circle. Going around in a circle. Going in a circle. Gonna fly high like a bird up in the sky. Fly in the sky. Oh. I'm bringing the ear up. Do you have any animal fun facts? I've got lots of them. Uh, Shoot one. Nothing off the top of my head. Uh, the one that got me the other day was learning that elephants can hear sound waves below our frequency of hearing. Yeah, and it's a lot. Oh, of... No, they make rumbles below our frequency of hearing. Sorry. Yeah. Really? Yeah, they make sounds we can't hear. They're so low. And a lot of what they pick up is through their feet. Are you ever planning to sell your original drawings one day? I'm very interested. Oh, I, we do it all the time, actually. Yeah, we sell drawings from, not from the Disney movies, though. We don't sell them. Instagram comment. I find it fascinating how much the 12 principles still apply to all the mediums of animation, even 3D. Oh, yeah. That's that's absolutely true. It's good. That's a good point to make. That's why, you know, even if you're doing 3D animation, I recommend, you know, my animation courses because they they do apply in a lot of ways. Ooh, is that a tiger? That's a lion. That is a lion. Lion, baby. And uh, what kind of pencil are you using again? This is a Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi High Uni 10B pencil. What supplies do you need to get into paper animation? Well, you need paper, obviously. You don't necessarily need a disc like this. This is what I'm I'm using a disc right here. Uh, you can just get a peg. You definitely need pegs. These are right here. Well, this one's a little tight. There we go. So basically, probably making a, a big mess for myself. Don't die. So the pegs are, are removable. So you can just, you know, you, there's metal pegs you can get. There's pegs like this. You really just need pegs and a desk and paper. You can get pencils. a um, plastic peg bar on Amazon for like a couple of bucks. Um, 
there's round peg bars or this is what's called acne punched where it's got the the rectangular paper holes yep. into the round um so you can buy acme paper hole punches but they tend to be really expensive but they so you can also just use a regular three round three hole puncher and get a, a round peg bar they make those too they don't hold to the pegs quite as well but they will work if you're just trying to dip your toe into something yeah What supplies would you think needed to start oil paint? Oil paint, canvas, brushes. Oil paint, canvas, brushes, and uh, some kind of thinner. Turpentine, turpenoid, mineral spirits. That's really all you need. I've got a whole course on my website on, on uh, oil painting. That Mitsubishi pencil, is that Mitsubishi like as in the car company? I don't know. I don't think it's the same company. I'm going to look that up, though. No, because the, the the company is, is Uni. The model is just Mitsubishi, but it's spelled like the car company, yes. Yes. But it has nothing to do with the car company. No, some people are saying it is the same company. I didn't say that when I purchased it. Have you ever needed to erase stuff on the paper? Oh, yeah. I've been erasing stuff here today. All the time. Yeah, and now I have his kind of his jaw closing and the mouth coming up. Can you use, can I use just uh, in the same way that you're doing it, or you could? Different? You just have to make sure you punch the paper. It needs holes to register. Now you could go you could do really low down and get post-it notes and do it with post-it notes. Alex on Instagram makes a comment. Honestly, at this point it seems more financially viable to begin learning animation by drawing on a tablet with animation software. The skills would translate to paper. Yes, it would. I, I would agree. Yeah, I think that's a good a, a good notion. I mean, if you're looking to just Player, you know, if you don't want to invest in an iPad or a tablet well, or yeah. Cintiq or something or or a, a pen tablet like an Intuos or something, and you want to just do with do paper, paper is still viable. But you're right, it's viable. But yeah, it's like I, I I still recommend doing a tablet because one of the things I love about working doing hand drawn digital is that you don't have to shoot it. You don't need to invest in a down shooter and a camera and all that. It's it's instant playback. Although you can use a, a cell phone as a down shooter if you wanted to. Yeah, There's you options. could. It's yeah. just, I, I just, once again, go back to instant playback. Right. Uh, as part of the uh, oil painting uh, supplies question, uh, do you have a, a certain type of canvas for oil painting or will any kind of Pretty much any, any pre-primed canvas will do. said uh, I don't have a tablet uh, so I use my phone but I do switch to traditional to digital so that's guess, cool like back and forth yeah so does Aaron he does digital and traditional yeah we're doing it today we're doing traditional today we did digital art hours ago 
I wonder what it looked like if you the first half of a of an animation on paper, but then you transition and do the second half on digital. Well, we could. I mean, you could get brushes that and, and digital brushes that look a lot like pencil, and you could definitely, you know, with TV Paint, you can scan drawings in with TV Paint really easy. Applesauce on YouTube asks, "What are you making here?" A uh, lion, a lion roar. Yep, this is just... just trying to show you what it's like how to get a lion to roar with paper animation. Oh, just trying to see. Sorry. Yeah. Here he's coming up and then down and then we've got that big roar. roar. Explosion. Now this isn't really how a real lion would roar. It's not quite this explosive. But I wanted something dramatic. Rawr! This is more like, hey, you stepped on my toe. It's as him stepping on a on a Lego. Mark Marky Mark on YouTube asks, have you ever made any comic books? Is that a f art form you'd like to get into now that webtoons have become more popular online? No, I haven't done any comic books. So it's something that we've talked about doing. We'd like to do a a wildlife animal based uh, comic book story for sure. Something big and epic that would take a long time to animate and we <laughs> just tell it in a tell it in still frames instead. Yeah. Uh, would going to art university actually be helpful for my art? I want to go to one when I'm older. It depends on what you're looking for. So, you know, if it's it depends on how you work within, you know, do you work better with other like-minded people or do you work better alone? You know, art school is expensive, so is it something that you're, you can pay for? Or, you know, there's other cost-effective ways of learning all of that out there. So it all, it, it's, there's a lot of different things to consider. Do you know how many frames you will end up needing for this animation? No, I'm just kind of going straight ahead for today. Probably about 10. 10 drawings. How much detail was actually added on a on feature production back in the days? Was there always a cleanup pass? Oh, there was always a cleanup pass. Yes. He's asking how detailed. Would you make the drawings this detailed in an actual? It, not always. Sometimes we would. Uh, what's a good software for 2D animation that's not too expensive? Um, well, there's Calipeg for iPad. iPad. Procreate has some animation in it. Yep. Uh, if you're on a computer, Krita has animation in it, and that's free. Uh, Open Tunes is free. Um, but the animation software that Aaron uses is not free. It's called TV Paint, and that's the one we recommend the most. Uh, do you use uh, tube? No, I don't. I've never used it. I get that question a lot. I um I started when I started working uh, doing digital, hand drawn digital animation. I started right off with TV paint, and I liked it so much. I never tried anything else. Cool. <laughs> nice arc on that mouth, Aaron. YouTube comment. Thank you. 
Oh, someone said Blender is a good option too. Yeah, that's free. Blender, Blender does 3D and 2D with their uh, Grease Pencil, which which we've got to try that on a future video. Have you ever worked with concept art before? And do yes. you have any tips for expressions? You know, uh, expressions, the, <laughs> the, the best tip I can give you is keep your expressions simple. When you have complex uh, mouth shapes and eye shapes and that sort of thing, it, it actually dulls the, the expression. So keep your expression simple. And that's the best piece of advice I can give you right now. Who is your favorite Disney sidekick? Disney sidekick. I really liked um what was the firefly in uh in uh oh. um in, um Mulan? The, uh... Oh no, the cricket I'm thinking of in Mulan. What do you the firefly? The firefly in uh Princess and the Frog. Princess and the Frog. Oh yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> you about killed me to death. <laughs> yeah, bro. what do you think is the hardest thing to learn when you're first studying animation um i think well it's all hard um trusting in the process you know staying loose and trusting that it's gonna it's still gonna be it's gonna be good I was so used to well, being tighter with my, with my drawing. And uh, his name is Ray. Ray, that's right. Name Raymond? <laughs> <laughs> is there such a thing as drawing too loose? Yeah, I mean, when you're drawing so loose that you're not really, it's just messy. It's got to be clear. You can still be loose. You can be loose and clear. That's the thing. And when it's not clear anymore, then yeah, that's that's too loose. You doing okay on water, Aaron? I am. You notice I think I love is um, Olaf the uh, the Kronk. Oh yeah. And then Kronk. I love Kronk. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, can you get his thing? Yeah, that's probably another. another one. And especially to uh, to personally, I love. Him. And Isma, I got to say, Isma is probably one of the best villains. Oh yeah. Is this the uh, the way they the two interact together? Is probably the I know. We lost the uh, the producer for that for uh, that film, Randy Fulmer, who passed away just a couple weeks ago. So there'll be an in between. I'm going to throw another key in between these drawings. Is Coda so what, is a Coda is a sidekick. Well, Coda, yeah, kind of. Yeah, Kenai is the main character. Coda is the, the side character. But he's he's a little bit more than a sidekick. He's kind of like halfway between. Yeah. Instagram question. Can you share something with us about the first animation project you ever worked on? Yeah, I mean I worked the first animation project I ever worked on was Roller Coaster Rabbit. If you go on YouTube right now, you can find it. It's a roller coaster rabbit, Roger Rabbit cartoon. It was done in nineteen eighty nine. And that's where I, I first worked with an artist, uh, an animator by the name of Mark Kausler. And uh, he was a great, is a great uh, kind of Tex Avery, uh, Looney Tunes kind of guy. He was a, uh, Roger Rabbit was right up his alley. So what I'm doing now, it's not, I wasn't, I'm not erasing. Well, I did erase, but I'm, uh, I'm tying, I'm kind of basically rubbing it down is what we call 
We rub down the drawings and then we uh, we tie them down. But um, yeah. So ro roller coaster rabbit, we we uh, we did it for. It was a short that went out with Dick Tracy. Does anybody remember Dick Tracy? That yes, movie? I saw it in the theater. I don't know if anybody even remembers that movie anymore. It was it was popular when it came out, but no it's one a ever huge movie. Yeah, never. No one ever really talks about it. I think it's on Disney Plus. Oh, is it? Yeah. Uh, do you know of any free websites where you can study art animation? YouTube? Yeah, YouTube. YouTube. YouTube's your best option. Aaron has a YouTube channel. Uh, YouTube.com slash Aaron Blaze Art. Yeah, We're live streaming there right now, as a matter of fact. Yep, we are on YouTube right now. We're on YouTube. We're on TikTok. We're on Instagram. We are on Twitch. We are on Twitter or X or whatever the heck it's called these We're days. Everywhere. Facebook. As uh, a person writes, my, uh, my boyfriend has always been a big fan of Brother Bear. Uh, he wanted to ask you, what was the inspiration for the movie Brother Bear? Um, there was a lot of inspiration that went into that. Um, one of the, the first inspirations behind it, we wanted to do something intimate, a relationship between siblings, a father, mother. Um, and we, when we started writing the story, it was uh, my my producer chuck williams and myself we were, we were pretty close friends to begin with and uh we just started talking about things that were emotional to us and our relationships with our family and then we started talking about you know different songs and th movies and things like that were that were emotional and once what uh, song that came up was harry chapin's uh, cats in the cradle and uh, it's a song about a father who didn't spend enough time with his son. And um, and his son grew up to be just like him, not having enough time for him. And it's a really emotional song. And we always talked about how it resonated with us and our own fathers. And, and, uh, and we wrote the first draft of Brother Bear. And it was actually called Shadow Bear at the time. We wrote the first draft of that. It was just a couple of pages. Uh, based on that notion of a father who didn't spend enough time with his son. And uh, and we wrote a whole story behind it because we were inspired by by that song, Cats in the Cradle. Instagram question. When animating, do you often find your animation matches the actor's body language while they were recording the dialogue? Not as much as you might think. Um, we did record them. But it's not, you know, you got to remember the actors are so um, constrained a lot of times in the booth. Uh, they're not able to emote as much as they might want to physically. Uh, so a lot of what we, you know, depending on how, what the staging is for the shot. Um, we don't, we don't mimic the actors as much as a lot of people think. Who do you think is the best designed Disney villain? Maleficent. I was just going to say Maleficent's pretty good. The question was uh, best, best Disney villain? Mm -hmm. best, best design. design. Best design. Uh, Twitch question. I have to design a misunderstood villain for an assignment. Do you think, do you have any advice on what makes a good one? You know, get into the, well, it's, it's not so much the look as, as much as the story behind the character. You know, find out what that backstory is that's going to make them misunderstood. You know, all the best villains 
are really, first of all, you know, a big part of animation is appeal. And a big part of appeal is the writing and not just the look. And you can have villains that are appealing. Appealing isn't always, a, it, it doesn't mean that they're happy, good looking characters. It means they're interesting. And so that's where you want to, you want your characters to be interesting. And so um, when you're creating that character, think about that backstory. Find the things that, that, make them who they are but you can relate to and, it, and it's their it's the way they react to these adversities that really makes them a villain or the way that, you know but they have aspects to them that you can relate to i mean if you look at some of the classic villains like um you know darth vader he's this character that when you understand why he went to the dark side and all that you understand him which makes him much more appealing when you have a, a a bad guy that's just bad that's not interesting but when you have characters that have literally in that case you know turned to the dark side because of the adversity in their lives you've got something that's really interesting you know one of the worst villains i can think of in a, in a film is in gladiator joaquin phoenix's character and all he really ever wanted he you know he was lazy and he was a coward but he always wanted to make his father proud and and when his father picks russell crow over him uh it it you can feel the hurt you understand that pain and the embarrassment that he felt you can understand it this is a cool drawing aaron this frame you're doing right now there's oh something, there's something really stylistically cool going on in that drawing um speaking of good design it's got a cool design yeah. uh when you're flipping the pages like that, what is it that you're actually looking for? I'm looking for arcs. I'm making sure I'm following arcs. I'm making sure the masses are standing the right way. In this case, I'm really looking at the masses of hair and how they might reverse or or bunch up, you know, from the drawings before. Because I want them to have weight. There's a lot of different things I'm looking at. Look how much he's changed. Changed a little bit. He's grown from uh, where we started. But it's still kind of believable because he's coming forward in a way. Now I want to break I want to break out from Yeah, I think I want to do this. I want to bring the the main Bring that mane under his chin and have this all read in silhouette. Have the silhouette read more clearly like that. Yeah, see, that reads better. Angela on YouTube asks, once we purchase a course from you, how long do we have access to that course? You have access to it forever and you can download it forever. Yep, it's lifetime access. Lifetime. So that we... we we chose to do something a little different than other other uh, art websites in that um, if you purchase a course, um, if you purchase it, it's yours forever. You don't just get to stream it. You download it and it's yours. Uh, speaking of which, we're having a sale this weekend over at CreatureArtTeacher.com. All of our animation courses are just $10 each. Or you can get any two for fifteen dollars, and that stacks on top of each other. By the way, so if you buy four, you get they're you know it's be thirty dollars for four courses. You you keep saving that five dollars every every two courses. And uh, yesterday was World Lion Day, and we are having a sale on our puzzles. Get your paws on a puzzle. Uh, yeah. Celebrate World Lion Day with us. Uh, if you use promo code LIONS, you can get $5 off any puzzle order if you go to creatureartteacher.com slash puzzles. Just enter that promo code. Get your paws on a puzzle. Is this Mufasa? No, it's not Mufasa. It's just kind of a made-up lion of my own. Very close to Mufasa, I guess, but way more detailed. 
I'm going to simplify Any that. chance you'll do a short animation on paper on your website or on YouTube? Yeah, I think we will do that at some point. So now I want to throw an in-between in here, then we'll call it, call it. I'm going to put an in-between right in here. Show you how I do in-betweens. So I want to get an in-between drawing. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to figure out that, that connecting drawing in between these two. How did you get into Disney? I'm looking to get into colleges, but I don't know where to start or what Disney is looking for. Well, you got to realize I got into Disney 35 years ago. So it's a little different getting into Disney now than it was back in the mid 80s. And, uh, I, you know, I submitted a portfolio. They were, I went in to, to, to actually train to become an animator. I said, I didn't know how to animate. So, so it's a little different now. And uh, they trained me to become an animator. Uh, but nowadays it's, you know, you, you, you keep a social media presence. You, you have a portfolio online. And, uh, and you and you uh, uh, network, you know, you, you through your your social media. So many people are seeing, you know, being seen in that way. What are your thoughts on two D rigged puppet animation? I don't know anything about it, really. They do a lot of it in television. Yeah. When we were in Ireland with Cartoon Saloon, and then there's they had that uh, Lighthouse Studios there that we also did demonstrations for. Yeah. Aaron. Yeah. They do a lot of that. Um, yeah, I just don't know much about it. I mean, it, it has an interesting look for sure. Yeah, I, I think it has a place. I think it just depends on what you're doing, you know. Yeah. I mean, obviously, just like 3D animation, you're constrained by the limits of the rig. So, yeah, you know, if you have a bad rig, you're going to end up having some wonky animation. Yeah. I mean, you always have the option, I guess, to insert frames if you need it hand drawn, you know, to match the look if you wanted to. Is there a part, Twitch question, is there a part of the animation process that you dislike or never look forward to, even after all your years of experience? Charting. <laughs> Back when I had to chart, you know, for the follow-up from assistance and things like that, charting was always a drag. You should show your chart again and then explain why. Well, what we would do is, you know, we would have to go through, this is charting. So, you know, we wouldn't always do all of our, our drawings. We'd leave we'd leave some of the drawings that needed to be done out. And so for our people that followed us up, we had to write charts, create charts to explain to them where the drawings that go in between, where they fell in between the time, the spacing and that sort of thing. And so we would have to go through on every key and every breakdown. And if you have a long shot, you know, there's a lot of keys, a lot of breakdowns and you got to do and make, go through and create these charts and make sure that they're all timed out the right way so that they can, they can fill it out the right way. And it's a necessarily, it's a necessary, not necessarily, it's a necessary thing that you have to do in order to communicate to the people behind you, you know, what it is that you're trying to, trying to do artistically. So, but it's still just, it's just a, it's a time consuming drag to do sometimes. Do you see the finished product in your head before you start drawing? Question from Lars on YouTube. Yeah, by and large, I do. I try to, I try to see it. Uh, YouTube question. Do you think paper 2D stop motion animation will make a comeback? I hear and read a lot about people saying it will never happen because of 3D. 3D. Are you cynical and skeptical about it too? I'm not cynical about it. I mean, you can't stop 
people coming up with new ways of doing whatever. Um, but I don't think it's ever going to go away. Uh, it's never going to be what it was in the 90s. But I think it's actually currently on an upswing. I do think it is. I agree. I think it's on an upswing big time. Uh, if you go look at films like Klaus, you know, on Netflix or Wolf Walkers by Cartoon Saloon, you know, there are 2D animated feature films being made. They're just, for the most part, being made outside the United States. So, I, I you know, I've heard rumblings that Disney has some stuff in the works. So, we'll see. Uh, you know, I think they're aware that there's pent up demand for it. It goes away if you let it go away. This is something I've always said. If you don't, if you don't want it to go away, then make a film. Do it in 2D. That's what we're doing. And you know, it, it, see where it goes. Don't let the film. Don't let the the the, the medium die. Uh, YouTube question: Does making crinkles in the physical paper when flipping like that cause you to run into any problems later on in the process? No, and they 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 were always prepared for that. So, yeah, we would end up with a lot of crinkles, which you can clean up. You know, when you do the the drawing scans. Those could get they get cleaned up very easily. That was part of the first things that would get cleaned up are the, the crinkles in the paper. What are your thoughts on the right segment for Fantasia? Oh man, it's beautiful. I love it. One of my one of my favorite parts. Do you prefer to animate in silence or while listening to music? Music. I always listen to music. Now, it depends on what I'm animating. If I'm doing something like this that doesn't have any dialogue, I can listen to music. If I'm doing something that, that has dialogue, I can't listen to music. It's too distracting. And I've got to turn it off until I'm doing something that doesn't require as much concentration. Kind of covering the art a little bit, Aaron. Oh, sorry. Just a little bit. <laughs> Instagram question How do you maintain the volumes of your character so well? Oh, that just comes from practice. And I and I still I still have you know have tendencies for characters to grow. You know, this character is grew a little bit. Not much, but grew a little bit. Joel wants to know, did you ever get to meet Don Bluth or Richard Williams? I never got to meet either one of them. No. I mean, Richard Williams has since passed. Don Bluth is still with us. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't met Don Bluth yet. I've met Miyazaki. I'm lost with onion layers. How do I follow the forms? Well, first of all, I'm not sure what software you're using, but in most of them, Aaron only has, you only keep two drawings on the one before and the one after when you're using software right? yeah when i'm using onion skin yeah yeah there's a lots of software and by default it has like eight drawings on which is well on tv paint you can do like 12. yeah i'm just saying it's you really only need the drawing that's coming before and the drawing that's coming yeah after. sometimes you want to see you know if, if you don't if, you, if you're having a hard time clicking through you just want to see an arc how you're following an arc then i'll i'll put on like three drawings so Manny, can, so Manny Carrasco that. says, hey, Aaron, please. Hey, Manny. Hey, Manny. Bozeman, Montana. <laughs> Doing a big roar. Roar. <laughs> Pink Spaghetti on Twitch wants to know, do you have any tips for creating good animation arcs? Yeah, just watch your arcs. <laughs> you know, you know, well, you, you if you can before. get if you can get your arcs and your slow ins and slow outs, that's eighty percent of animation. I always say that. Well, you've also talked about there's arcs within arcs. There's arcs with yeah. I mean, arcs can get. There's two different types of arcs. There's the two dimensional arc. It's the arc that's on the physical screen, and when you can get things to follow in arcs in that two dimensional space. Your animation becomes fluid, but you also want to think of arcs in three-dimensional space where something's coming towards you and it's got to arc that way too. But if you can combine the two, then you end up with something that's very fluid.
I don't always draw out the entire drawing either. This one I'm just going to... Do you think it's better to draw the entire motion as a sketch before detailing? Sometimes I get so excited to draw it out that I kind of skip that part. Uh, just scribble it out first. Scribble it out. I always recommend that. In this case, I, I, I pretty much scribble out the whole thing first. Martin Berger wants to know, how many drawings have you done for this so far? Oh, I don't know. Today, probably about 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then plus our roughs. Plus we're talking. Yeah, I've spent more, more time working these out. I believe they mean pen mean pencil, but they asked, "What pan sole did you use?" <laughs> My pan sole. Uh, this is the Mitsubishi Ten B Ten B High Uni, or the High Uni Mitsubishi Ten B, I should say. His muzzle got a little bit short on this drawing. How did you get to meet Miyazaki? I went to Japan uh, when we finished Brother Bear. Um, I went to Japan to promote the film uh, when it opened in Asia. So I was doing a lot of press interviews and, and uh, Disney set up uh, a trip to Studio Ghibli, you know, just, uh, you know, when I was done. Since I was there, they went ahead and set it up for me. And so I, I went and met with them. That was right but, around the time that Disney just started distributing the Ghibli films. Well, yeah, it was 2004. Yeah. When we went, it's right around that time that Disney started distributing the DVDs and all that. Yeah, for them in the U.S. All right. Well, I think we've kind of hit it here, and uh, so let's go back and review. Facebook comment: I bet that Mitsubishi pencil gets great gas mileage. <laughs> it does. So here's where we started. You can see the drawings are a bit tighter. So he's uh, taking that breath. And then coming down for that anticipation. And then the big rawr, comes up, kind of leading with the corner of his mouth. Rawr, and then up. This is a fun drawing right here. Coming up. Now there would be drawings in between all of these as well. Maybe later we'll shoot this animation and post it online. Yeah. Well, I'd love to do the drawings in between. And then, uh, Maybe we'll really do that get, next week. Really get it down. That'd be fun to do. And then there's another added drawing. Rawr! Then he's coming down. This one's a bit wonky. Oops, where are we? There we go. Did you draw this from memory or from reference? I drew this from my memory. Imagination. Imagination. And then here, his head's coming back down. So there you go, folks. Animating on paper. It's amazing what you can do. It's I, you know, I, I just love this medium so much. You can have so much fun with it. And uh, and then at the end, you've got a nice stack of drawings that you can you can flip through. And uh, these can't, I can't really flip through these so much, but they, uh, they're fun. So I hope you guys learned something. Remember, we got the sale going on over at creatureartteacher.com. Yeah, animation sale. All of our courses, animation classes are just $10 each this weekend, or you can get any two for $15 at creatureartteacher.com. Also, we've got a sale on puzzles. Uh, if you use promo code LIONS, you can get $5 off any puzzle order, and that's creatureartteacher.com slash puzzles. And as always, think about our membership options. We sell all of our courses a la carte, but you've also got the option to become a member. And with our annual plan, you get all, it says 500 hours on the screen, but you get all 700 hours of our courses now. Everything is yours to keep, plus you get thousands of brushes. Uh, we do live exclusive events for members. We live stream twice a week. Uh, That's the thing I really love. I, you know, I'm making this, this animated short snow bear. And if, I didn't, if we weren't doing the live streaming, I'd just be sitting in my office by myself every day just drawing. 
but twice a week I get to hang out with you guys and uh, or the members and we get to talk and we hang and, uh, and we, we trade stories and and I feel like I've got you know a studio full of people and, and you know hanging out each time and so it's it's just a great experience yeah you're back at the old Disney studio again yeah and so we've got an annual plan and we've got a monthly option if, if you prefer to do something like that it works kind of like Netflix where you uh, you know you can stop or start nope. none of these plans have any sort of contracts you can cancel at any time or you can just buy any course a la carte like I said so there's no obligation but we want to give you options so head on over to creatureartteacher.com and check it out we've got if you enjoy animation we've got tons of that we've got animal drawing uh traditional medias painting courses watercolor oil uh storyboarding tons of storyboarding classes on sale we've got we've got courses on how to pitch ideas from uh chuck williams who's a producer who produced brother bear and worked on the sonic the hedgehog movies and helped get those made um so he talks about how to do pitching uh how to you know story development courses all kinds of stuff so check it out it's all on sale over there all right. Well, uh, we're going to take off. I hope you guys enjoyed today. I hope you learned something. And uh, have a great, safe weekend. Go on out there and put some beauty back into the world. That's what we do as artists. And uh, I'll be back again on Tuesday for those of you that are members at the website. Uh, we'll see you at 10 a.m. Tuesday morning, bright and early. If you're not a member, go on over and consider it. Otherwise, I'll see you back here next Friday. So have a great weekend, you guys. Talk to you later. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for watching.